the house we're sitting in was built between 1772 and 1774. And where we're sitting in Blacksburg, Virginia, really is kind of the furthest west you see this type of architecture. And the reason why it exists is because there was a, an immigrant who came from uh, Northern Ireland, um, but he came over here following in the path of his uncle, uh, James Patton. Um, who was part of the Draper's Meadow uh, community, the first settlement in this area. Some people will say that this is the best example of colonial architecture west of the Blue Ridge Mountains, and really it is. When they built the house, there were just log structures around. That, that's about it. I mean, this, this house made a huge, huge statement to anybody who came here. You know, right now, we are sitting in the drawing room of the house. And the drawing room, if you, if you were a guest to the Preston family, this is where you would come, where you would sit, where you'd be entertained. This is, a, this is a room where uh, there would be enslaved people waiting on you if you're a white guest. This is also a room, very likely, that the enslaved community was divided up at least four times when, when, when the property was divided up. So this, this, this room has a lot of history. You're able to go upstairs if you were to visit us. And right up above us is, um, is a bedroom where girls would have stayed. So if you were a guest and you brought children with you, they would have stayed upstairs with the Preston children. Girls on this side and boys just a little bit down, down the hall and in between is a little landing. And we have it set up uh, to, to resemble what it might have looked like when an enslaved woman slept up there. We also have a main chamber on this floor. The main chamber is where Susanna Smith Preston and William Preston would have stayed. And if you were an adult visiting here, you would have stayed in that room too. Um, we've got two beds in there. We also have a dining room, and we have a, a, a school room too. The school room served as the first school in this region. It's important too to remember that William wasn't responsible for doing all the work here in this house. There were between 1774 and 1865 at the end of slavery. There were roughly 216 enslaved people who lived here, who, some of whom died here. And the enslaved people were the hands that built this house. So when you walk through the house and you see tool marks downstairs in the, in the floor joists, those tool marks were likely laid by enslaved labor here. So there were carpenters, there were masons, there were all of these people who were trained to, to do really complex tasks. Uh, so William had the vision, he had the idea. It was really executed by enslaved labor. The New River Valley to me, I think especially as somebody who had ancestors travel through this area, is a really special place and I think it's really special to people who grow up here and it's really special for people who decide to make it their home coming from somewhere else. And it's, it's, I think it's because of the tremendous natural beauty that's here, but also the really rich history that's here too. It's, it's easy, I think, sometimes for people to think of cultural attractions and think of Eastern Virginia and forget about Southwestern Virginia, including the New River Valley. But when, when people come through here and they're, they're, they're captivated by, by the, the mountains, this, this sort of valley between the Appalachian Plateau and the, and the Blue Ridge Mountains, they're, they're really looking at a place where for thousands of years, people saw it as a good place to live, a good place to be. We need places like Smithfield to serve as reminders of what happened and, and, and help people, I think, gain better perspective for the world that they're seeing now and, and hopefully imagine a better world.